Oh, my bad. Uh, the receiver was off, sorry, my bad. Let's try one more time. Did it turn it on? It turned itself off. Is it working? Yeah, yeah? now it's nice. Thank you for coming. It's a great honor to share my experience. Uh, newcomers can grab more pizza on the kitchen. About uh, Jenkins connected with Spark, how they can work together. I am simple. I mean, my brain is simple. So I always try to find simple solutions, try to find a logical connection in this complex world. And my name is Rocky. I'm currently working for Ericsson. According to Wikipedia, here is uh, definition of uh, continuous integration. I like this definition, especially this automate, because I'm lazy. I like to automate everything, like automate the document generation, automate environment setup. How about automate coding? Perhaps not. And we should keep it build fast. I don't want to wait five hours to see the result of what I'm working on. And we should uh, test it in a clone environment so that I can avoid the problem like, it's working on my machine, why not working on yours? It's your problem. Like Docker can easily to set up this environment in a sandbox way, so that we can eliminate this issue. By the way, if you have any question, just stop me. And there is some words called a CD. It can be continuously delivery, it can be continuously deployment. I'm wondering that any of you writing perfect code, defect free. Okay, you are good. I am not. <laughs> so we need to find a smart strategy to make it work, make our defect software working. So we can put piece by piece rolling our solution into production. And then we can verify if the solution is really working or not. Then we can compare that if the test result is good enough, we can compare with two solutions with A-B test. If the solution is not good enough, then we can immediately roll back without affect our production. We can use a solution like a Kubernetes provided by Google to get this smart strategy working. How many of you working in CI area? No one, amazing. Do you mean like using CI or? Anyone using CI? <laughs> wow, that's good. There are a bunch of CI solutions, hosted and unhosted. And here are some of the CI solutions I poked around. There is one called the Travis CI on the second. And this is 
really good one and have good integration with uh, GitHub. If you have GitHub project, then just put one file and it will run automatically to verify your system is working or not. And then there is a team city provided by IntelliJ. And it's uh, a ready solution, which means then you can download, install, and ready to use without lots of administration work. And this one called the Stride uh, CD. I really love it because it's really simple and a really clean uh, web interface. It's developed uh, in Node.js. And there's one bamboo. It's provided by Atlassia, uh, like this uh, Jira stuff. If you're using lots of Atlassia product, then bamboo is a good candidate. So why shall we use uh, Jenkins? The reason there are few, one is that it's free, and it's pretty easy to set up, and there are a bunch of different plugins, and the community is pretty large, especially in enterprise environment. With all those plugins, we can do almost everything you wanted. Simple use case, complex use case, and the stranger use cases. The philosophy with Jenkins and like Team City, they are different. The Jenkins, uh, the pre example the solution is quite small, and it depends on the administrator to decide what extra plugin to use. There are a few Jenkins terms, job or project, they are interchangeable. This is one configuration to what to run, what to test. And one run of a job called build, and a build can have a test report. And the log for a build called te console text and there is a concept called a node. Node is a logical machine. It's uh, even not a virtual machine. It's just a logical machine to run those jobs. And uh, there are concept called ex executor. This is that how many jobs can run concurrently. This node here is just a logical computer. It's not really connected with distributed computation. It's just put some task on that logical machine. One machine can have few logical nodes. There are many products use Jenkins, and here you, we can get a link. There are many use Jenkins, and some of them are not accessible. It's private hosted. In lots of companies, they are private. They don't want you to know that what's going on inside. And I found something interesting, one is called AngularJS. It's a JavaScript framework developed by Google. And I guess we all using Apache, some of Apache product, more or less. So in the example I show, I will using these two as uh, the data source. Anyone using AngularJS? Wow, cool. It's a nice one. J 
Jenkins has a REST API, and basically it has a three format or three interface. One is JSON. If we provide is a question mark pretty equals true, then it will give a well formatted JSON document. If without that pretty equals true, then it will get a one line, one line of JSON. And then there's a Python format. It provides some support for Python client. The format is basically the same, exactly the same with JSON. For some case, I found that some JSON document is not well formatted or one line. So I have this small JSON converter put on GitHub to get a nice document. Then we have this XML format, which is a bit more complex. But it has its own merit. The Jenkins REST API is exactly reflect the JSON model and the Jenkins model. It has a loot to get what's inside this Jenkins. Then under there are few jobs, and each job can have several build, and each build can have a report, and it will have a console text. This test report is optional, so it might not have. If the job is not configured to publish test report. This is a Jenkins server for AngularJS, and this is a live one. It's, I directly try to embed this one into the slides. For example, this is for the master branch. And we can say, okay, there are something test result. And there are lots of build. It's running. If I go deep into this build, and it has a test result like this, we can dive deeper into somewhere. And then to see how long does it execute it, what's the status it is. And there is a console output which sees the log when the job is executed, what's going on inside. But this one is the front end. It does not reflect, okay, well, what's really the data in the back end? We can using a REST API to get those low level information. And this is a root document from the AngularJS. This is also a live one. And the most important thing is those jobs to see how many jobs does it have. And one of them is this master, this one. This is the master job. It provide another URL to, we can zoom in. And this is the document for the master. And the most important information is the build, yeah. But for some reason, not all the builds are listed here because it could have huge. It's from a start point to an end point. Here it's only list a few of them. It have an item called the first build. For example, here is 5010. So if everyone, every build is listed here, then it will have pretty long document. That's why it's not listed a complete build. 
if we go to the last build, then it get, okay, what's the last build is. And like this, field count, skip count, total count, and there is one called artifacts. Artifacts is configured that one when, when job, when it's run, I want to save some data. But the, this one, the artifact is pretty large. And uh, this artifact around 14,000 lines, 14,000 lines. So when we archive those artifact need to be used with cautious, otherwise it, the Jenkins server might get in slower because every data need to be stored, need to be passed. Then the build, the most important information are this, duration in seconds, and what's the status and when does it execute it, and which node is it run on. And there's one called the change set. It is that what file has changed in the commit. I have not started analyzing that yet. This can correlate with the test result, and what change makes what response. We can get a test report. This is a last builder's report. And this report is in JUnit test report format. It's pretty standard. Inside the test report, there are those information are uh, interesting, especially those how many test cases succeeded, how many test cases failed, and which machine is running on. Theoretically, that every machine should be working the same, but for some reason, some machine just not working at a certain period, and we could analyze the pattern. Okay, what's going on there? And inside a test report, there are lots of information for test case, for each test case run. And the information is pretty similar, except that there are some class name and the test case name. And this is the console text. Some information we can uh, get it from here. If that information not reported correctly in Jenkins, then we need to pass this console text. You perhaps using regular expression to get, okay, where do I send the command to? And are there any warnings? When I start getting this data, I using JSON because JSON is simple and I am simple. And there's a library called the Lift JSON provided by Twitter. No, by Lift Web, sorry. But soon I found that for a large report, it does not support well. And here the larger report means 10 megabyte, around 10 megabyte. I tried using another library called Jackson. It's uh, a bit better when parsing it, but still not good to pass large file. And then I tried to look in help from XML. But previously, I actually pretty hate XML because XML is really complex. Any of you hate XML? Any of you love XML? Oh, excellent. 
yeah, schema. XML like it's really good tool, but we can abuse it, make it complex. But actually here is the path, path the XML using Scala XML. We can see it's pretty easy to pass it. For example, for example, there is a build node that is an XML node, and we can get a child and get the text, what it is. This one line can get the information. And there, there are other information as well. It's, we can pretty the same, get it? So then I can forget about the time when I using XS or DOM4J for those nightmares. When I want to get down deep, I need to write really long code and handle exceptions. And it support well for larger report. Larger report means like 100 megabyte. But how about a huge report? Huge. What means huge? Huge means that the file is too big to put it into the memory. For example, that one gigabyte in the file size, in the memory footprint, it will easily exceed four gigabyte. So when we want to pass it, it cannot put it into the memory. What can we do? Like lots of solutions, we don't analyze it at once. We streamline it. And there's a nice one called event reader. And it can pretty easy to pass it to fetch the useful information and the discard the garbage. After I solve this problem, Any of you can guess what's the reason that we have such huge document? Because yeah? It's not the metadata, no, it's not the metadata, it's the test report. Yeah, but the, 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 all the information about the data. Yeah, so information about the, the data. data. Yeah. Okay, it can be called the metadata. Some of the information is not useful, especially when I analyze it. I found that the way to configure the Jenkins is wrong, or the, te the code is wrong. Because each run, it will have this console text. And the console text will put into a test case. For some reason, it was configured wrong, and then for the whole job, it dumped all the console log into each test case. If we will have 100 test case, then the size will be 100 times bigger. But the, for the old data, for the old data already run in the history, we still need to pass it. But I soon meet another problem that there are invalid characters in the report. It cannot pass. Why Jenkins return those invalid characters? I have not studied. But anyway, it's return those invalid characters. And it will make the pass fail. And those characters are not useful. And the easiest way is just remove it. And can using these few lines of remove the whole useless characters.
when I tried to crawl the Angular JS data, I found another problem. It does not work. Why it does not work? Because it has this HTTP to HTTPS redirect. So the world is complex when we are trying to find a road in a jungle. It's most likely not working directly. We need to find our way. And here is a simple solution to solve this redirect issue. And Jenkins server can be huge. So sometimes it will fail. And I don't want to start it from the beginning point again. So I should be possible to start from the failing point. And the Jenkins will continuously generate new data. Then we need to crawl the new build. I only want to crawl the new build. I don't want to get the old data again. <coughs> I have a feeling that how big a Jenkins server is that I try to crawl the whole Apache Jenkins server and it does not finish in three days. So I just stop it and pass some useful information, not the whole Apache Jenkins server. But can you uh, guess, uh, calculate how long time it will take before you run the Jenkins server? Probably three to uh, how many hours? Or that is all based on your previous experience, right? Or based on the previous run to, okay, I calculate how long does it has. But it's, hard for different jobs. Some jobs, they are small, some they are big, some they are huge. I had found that like one test report, that the size is eight gigabyte. So imagine if there are 1,000 uh, built, how long will that take? Just want to gather the data over the internet, not even pass it. Get those data is pretty boring, right? Because it's, we didn't generate the value yet, right? But it's an essential point to simplify the world from an unstructured world to a structured world to make something useful. <coughs> you have any? Question? No? Don't forget about t-shirts. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're all of different sizes, so you can pick uh, between S, uh, yeah. M, and L. Anyone? We're not talking about the original source of data or any point. We are look, going to look at the, the result, but uh, at the beginning, why are we too much serious about the metadata? Maybe not important. No, that, I would say not, that is not the metadata. It's the data generated by each run. But is the information about the data that is the metadata? No, no. How do you define the metadata? Just metadata is like we define a class, that's a metadata, and a, an object that is not metadata. But I mean, uh, the, you have to classify that, uh, what is the main result you are looking for or you are getting from your Actually, data. here, here so I... What are the rest of the data is just metadata because it describes the main data. This is the point. Uh, if your cluster is fails, huh? is that the main result you're looking for? 
I want to know that, no, okay. No, then, then what is that? That is the information about the metadata itself in the other data. In my understanding, metadata is like this. Okay, for a building, I want this height, widest, rooms, these are metadata. But for each building, this is 30 meters high and 50 rooms. That is not metadata anymore. That is the data. So what is that you show? You are, you are trying to get all the data from the people and put it into a kind of data storage? Yes. And you, you know up front what you, what you are looking for. Yeah, and uh, that is or are you discovering that on the way? What is your experience? That uh, will be mainly described in the next session. That okay. How can we use this data to get something useful because we know that we have lots of test cases running but what happened inside Jenkins can report success and fail <laughs> There are different solutions to gather the data. Solution like Apache NiFi, and that is the solution uh, released by NSA, I guess. And there is another one called Apache Notch, that is a web crawling solution. And for this case, I because the model is pretty fixed. It's not a flex model. And they use those solutions does not help much. It can help a little bit. But I have to, if I use those solutions, then I need according to their philosophy, their model. And in this case, I use directly using REST API to get the data stored. I just use CSV format. So you mentioned uh, incremental, so you want to continue crawling from when it failed last. Uh, yeah. Curious how do you handle that problem when we know which log file to pick and from what point you start picking again? That actually is pretty easy. I have a small <laughs> registry to say, okay, I have crawled the days and then doing the crawl next time, right? It's just a simple file, simple result. This is the previous step to analyze the data. So then the next part I will analyze this data using Spark on Zeppelin. Yeah, I have a question actually. Um, how you deal with historical data or how you define uh, what test data to crawl? Because let's say, let me give uh, our example, we have like thousands builds yeah. and we have to limit the amount of uh, like history stored. And I mean, uh, if uh, we have only five builds in a, like logs stored in a rolling manner, I mean, uh, what is the trigger? How, you, how would you define uh, what, uh, what build data to extract? How and uh, the frequency of build is different, so we can build it like once a day, or we can build it like five minutes, uh, one after another. How to pick the proper build? Is it automatic process, or you need to know build ID ma and manually crawl it? The the first time the crawling takes a long time. I try to crawl all the existing data. Then I just using Jenkins, okay? You run it once a day and crawl the incremental data. Okay, uh, then let's say you have, uh, in, in Jenkins terminology, you have slaves, right? Yeah. And let's say you have uh, like 100 slaves. Let's yeah. say like we are big, we are doing like heavy building. And you have 100 slaves and you have like, I don't know, let's say a terabyte of logs at every slave. And you have 100 terabytes, where would you put it? 
like to analyze. You can't put it in memory, or you need a really, really big crawling cluster for that. How, how the space issue is resolved in that case? The most useful information actually is not that big. I have uh, found uh, like few gigabytes. That's really the useful information. For the raw data, it can exceed a terabyte. And all the data we can uh, crawl use this master's machine, only from that machine. So, so okay, you, you don't need every build output, you just crawl for a state from master machine. Or like this job metadata from master or... I didn't store the um, um, job definition. I stored how the job is run at a certain time. Uh, okay, uh, just to just to be to, to clarify, maybe I missed uh, something. Uh, so we have job metadata in XML in uh, Jenkins. Yes, and that's what you crawl, and then you extract uh, the meaningful information from this job metadata and store it, right? Mm. Uh, the term job, that is a metadata. And it defines if I run that job, what to do. The first step is get the code from GitHub. The second step is run Maven test. The third step is publish the test report. And that is the metadata. So it's a job description. Yeah, that is the job description. And I don't crawl that data. I crawl the run information. Okay, that get first time to get the git. So execution metadata, basically. Execution, execution data. Okay. Execution data. But you say you have a test report and that's what category is doing. Sorry? A test report, so a category is a test report. Yeah. And what do you call it? Or what, do you, what is the term being used? For? I, I call test report. One, one test report that have multiple rows, and each row is one record, like how long does it take, the status is successful or not, and which machine it was running, and those kind of information. That data, the real data. Yeah, that is real data. That will be pretty hard to put something between the Jenkins server because we need to develop something, put it into Jenkins. Yeah, and because I'm not trying to put something inside the Jenkins. And uh, most likely even we have those and we have to cope all the histories. And the histories can be different. And we have to solve those issues one by one. Last question. I mean, have you tried the Python script to, to store all this information? No, I don't use in Python. I, 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 in this case, I use in Scala. I think, in my understanding. I, I use in Scala to crawl the data. I think that each language has its own merit. I mean it, uh, that, uh, the, the, yeah, as you mentioned, the memory one should consider uh, does it fit or not. Yeah. So Python should be. Should be the Python one. also have this memory issue. It can have stack overflow as they well. Have this, uh, also some library like Jenda and the DAS to keep a terabyte of data memory without any problem. I don't think that a normal library can pass an XML in gigabyte size without using streaming. 
Actually, there is uh, another model of XML parsing. It's like really, really uh, old from like my old time I started doing Java. Uh, there is like DOM parsing model, which is most widespread, but there is another one. It's a SAX par parsing model. There, there, there is and, streaming. And, I mean, with this, you can parse, like it, it was even before the term of streaming popped up. So you can parse whatever large XML and like create uh, event triggers in a, in a file sort of. And you can parse whatever large large file which never feeds the memory, so it's uh, like sort yeah, of the, speculative, uh, I would uh, say. Well, then, uh, that's the the same philosophy. You cannot put get everything into the memory. You have to go through the the file once. You cannot put it into memory because it's too large. No more questions? How about this one? Oh. <laughs> yeah, we can take a break. And